Yo, what's up guys, Nanja here. Welcome to another video. So I talk about this a lot in some of my videos, but but generally when I try when I, when I play, I try to look for I try to look for these game states where I can make premeditated plays in order to get stronger blowouts. Such as say for example in my recent video from I think two days ago, the difference between a win and a loss, why I pinged my opponent's bladed hedgehog, thus sending him into a state of confusion because he had no idea why I did that and he was trying to figure it out, couldn't figure it out, and I was able to blow him out. Generally, when I do these plays, I, I usually do them with a greater purpose in mind and, and, some form, and some form of immediate value. However, sometimes these plays can go wrong if you, if you don't understand the, the why, of why, of, why you're doing, of why you're doing a play. Additionally, if you, if you underestimate the game state that you're in, because some game states will require you to immediately clear and just forego any sort of like greater value. And some and some game states you have you have that luxury to go ahead and be like okay well I I can I can afford it to go ahead and you know take a little bit of damage here in order to set up a, in order to set up a bigger clear. This is gonna be in a game. Yeah, this is gonna be a game where my opponent where my opponent does it incorrectly and is going to die for it. So let's go and get into the game. So I couldn't actually figure out what, what my opponent was on, by that, but I think he was neutral Aegis. I think he was neutral. Yeah, I think he was neutral Aegis from, from the way he was playing, and generally because I knew he, that he was playing a slower list. So I'm on the play. This is nice. This is where I want to be. And I go ahead and I just will keep this hand. So let me clarify here. If I did, if I didn't. If I didn't know that this wasn't that this wasn't ladder, and, and, and that my opponent most likely uh, was going to be playing the best deck, especially because he's not masters, and you know, obviously, like the the general idea for, for people who are in like a who are in like AA and below is, is obviously that you know they want to get to masters or whatever. So if I if I didn't have a strong read that he was playing that he, that he was playing neutral he was, uh, he was playing neutral Haven. I would not. I would not have kept the Tina. I only keep the Tina just because if he's neutral Haven, good, awesome. I get to do things. However, this is really bad if he's not. If he's a slower Haven, because if he's a slower Haven, th those Havens don't really play creatures. So if that's the case, that's gonna be bad. Now, thankfully, because I'm on the play, I can always go ahead and just tempo out this Tina. However, if you're on the draw, probably don't want to keep this Tina. So I'm just gonna fast forward this a little bit. So I just got an Oracle. Next turn, I'm just gonna, next turn, I'm just gonna tap out a Tina. I don't mind getting rid of this Tina because again, I have a second one. Additionally, I additionally I do it in such a way that I get to forever the turn afterwards, which will be very, very, very which will be very, very good for me because my opponent missed this turn too, which means that one, he's, we, we can we can safely assume that he's probably a slower list, and then two. If he is a slower list, I, I just need to dig for Polly. So right now, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm actually in a decent spot because right now I can go, I can go up to seven mana. If I if I see Polly and I if I see if I see Polly and I see Sibla off the top, I'm gonna win this game. Just straight up, just gonna win this game. Here he plays Kaiza. Now when he plays the Kaiza, I now know okay. He's most likely neutral something because only neutrals play Kai well, only neutrals and madmen and madmen like me play Kaiza. So because I know that's the case, Fervor is still going to be my play. Oh, uh, oops. Okay. The reason why Fervor is still my play is because I'm not in any I'm not in any danger. Additionally, if if I if I if I take a value trade here, I get the force to use an Evo. I know he has a carrot in hand, so I know most likely he's gonna go two drop, two drop. Or he's gonna go two drop, two drop. I can clear that up perfectly with my Tina. I can clear that up and play an additional creature at the same time. I get to play the additional creature, and then from there I get the fervor again if I want to. I'll be at ten. I'm at ten versus an aggro deck. Well, sorry, versus a, versus a perceived aggro deck, and I'll just you know I'll just be game winning because I can just like drop a Baja like it's hot and just you know win. So again, I bump, I bump because I want to force me to use the Evos. Evo shoes to not go face are good, are good by me. However, he plays the Tribunal. 
tribunal is a sign that okay, he's a slower, he's a slower list. Now we have to we have to we have to, we have to decide okay, what kind of slower list is he? I do think he misplayed by playing out the tribunal here, and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and we'll see the ramifications of this in a few turns from now, but. But for now, we just we just have to assume that he's a slower Haven list. Like he probably has a Themis in hand, and that and I'm gonna I'm gonna be in for a game because now I really really need to find that Polly. Thankfully, I get three more draw. I get four more draws to do so. I get one draw from my natural draw step. I get two more from the fervor, and then I get one more from my secondary natural draw step. I don't find it. However. I'm in. A, I'm in a good. I'm in a good spot if I just, you know, if I just like misguessed and he's actually like neutral haven, or if he's actually a neutral haven but that, that has like no other like additional agenda. So here, I just get a good dragon summoner because I'm still digging for this poly. Like, I, I I don't really have a choice. Like, this deck does not have that much storm damage. The only the only storm damage it has is Scythers and Zeus. That's that's not much. So I just go ahead and go Saha Israfil. I go Saha Israel because that because that uh, because fills up my curve the best and doesn't and doesn't let me like play into anything that I shouldn't be playing into except for Judge Retribution. But well, Judge is fine. I don't care about that. It does make it awkward for me because now I'm gonna have to throw my Scyther into that in order to play around in order to, in order to play around uh, Tribunal. However, that's still fine. I get a second Scyther. I, I and now I get to just go Scyther, Ayla, plus Tina. I don't have to use an evolve yet because ideally I want I want to have my evolves go face. Like ideally, most likely I'm gonna want, I'm gonna want to have have my Israfil use uh use use rush plus uh plus blazing breath. However, here he makes a very very interesting play. Like or rather not interesting play, but he, like well, it's interesting it's interesting because it's one of those like because because I know he thought about this. And it's more of this, like, like it made sense when you think about it. Okay. So when you look at the board state right now, the first the first thing you might be saying is, oh, he played directly into Breath of the Salamander. He could have avoided that if he just evolved the other way. However, he has two carrots in hand. We know this. We've seen the carrots go into his hand. He hasn't played them yet. But we know, but, 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 but if we were keeping track of his hand, then we know he has these. Yes. He's inviting. He's inviting me to play Breath of Salamander, which I haven't played because I haven't, I haven't needed to play it. This is all I lied. I, I've, I've only needed to play it once this entire game. So, if I play the Breath of the Salamander, that's actually really good for my opponent and not for me. The reason why is because Breath of the Salamander costs six mana. At six mana, there's there's very very few things I, I can play in the same turn. I've already used. I've already used. In Ayala, I've already I've already played both my Tinas. I don't have anything else that I can pl I can play at that at that mana cost. Additionally, because I can't play anything at that mana cost, that gives my opponent initiative, and he has double carrot. When he plays a double carrot, he's he's now something in the driver's seat because now he can do, he can force me into, into a lot of weird things. Because if I don't always clear his board, and if I don't clear it in a, such a way that that, ha that that I just like get to like I, I, I just get to have like a giant creature in play. He's gonna be able to just, just keep playing carrots and just keep removing my things one at a time. So generally, when you play, you want to go for proactive clears. That's that's why I say cards like say Israfil or sorry Israfil plus Evo that ne that nukes the board is one of the best things that you can do as Dragon, just because it's really difficult for people to deal with that. So so thankfully he makes this play it helps me a lot because because I, I have the blazing breath for the punish so here i'm just gonna go to israfil i'm also going to blazing breath his three four by doing this yes i play into tribunal however we've already seen him play one tribunal he uh he unlike me has not drawn whatsoever additionally because he's playing neutrals and because he's buffed stuff in his hand i need to keep this israfil as healthy as possible because i need to, i need to play around as many things as possible they can they can possibly do to me if he has hector then this is a bad play actually actually no 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 i lied i lied if he has hector um then this is actually a great play because he, because he's only buffed once if he's if he had buffed twice th then th then doing this would have been bad Actually, wait now. I'm, I'm, so, I'm still dumb. Math is hard. If he if he buffs once, the Hector's gonna be a seven seven plus the ping. It's three damage. 
is 10 damage altogether. So, so you can so you can clear, but he has to have exactly Hector. So I go ahead and I, and I make this play again. I need this Ishapul to stick because this Ishapul is going to, is going to do the majority of the damage that I do this game. Right now, he doesn't he doesn't know it. But, well, he should know it, but I'm threatening lethal. All right. So this turn, this this is the turning point of this game. This is where oh my opponent does something really really dumb. He gets him punished, and you know life is good. We take those points. Okay. So as I, as I just said a few seconds ago, most likely it's going to be very very difficult for him to clear it. However, I did not think about about this possibility. Here with two cards, he's able to clear this. It's going to cost him one card plus an Evo. However, I think that's fine for me because. Because I can just go ahead and drop a Bahamut on my opponent. I can drop the Bahamut again. He's most likely not, not playing not playing Themis in that list. Like we already knew he was playing the Tribunals, and that's that's perfectly fine. Tribunals one thing, but you're, but you're probably not playing Themis, and that's fine. So here, all the, all you need to do is just just trade with Gruff, evolve evolve Angel for it, and then there, there you go. That's a clear for him. Like it's not in a bad clear either, because ordinarily with an Israfil, Israfil would, would have eaten up three to four creatures, but now it's only gonna it's only gonna get to eat up three. Which even then that's not even that bad for me, but that's actually still crazy, but man. But here he just makes the ping, he makes the trade, but then he but then he doesn't do anything else. That's so fucking bad. Right. So the reason why that's bad is for several reasons. One, you are at effectively four HP. Do not do not screw around with this Ezra foe. What the fuck? Furthermore I still haven't shown you that card that I got that I got from Drag Summoner. I could have very easily gotten a Raft Drake. If I got a Raft Drake, Raft Drake clears this board. Raft Drake, sorry, Raft Drake, Raft Drake clears this board, unless he cracks in the face for, for for 12. If I have Dragoon Scyther, which again, that's a card you can get off Dragon Summoner. That's the, the uh, that I just I straight up have lethal. If I got Genesis, same thing. If I if I have if I have second Israfil plus Saha or something like that, same thing. It's really, really bad when you make plays like these because you set yourself up for failure. Like, I do not think when you're when you're when you're a deck that has no healing whatsoever that you can afford to fuck around with 12 damage in play. That's not that's not something you can do. So of course I just gonna go scyther, I eat with a scyther, and then and then crack my opponent for exactly 16. All you need to do is clear. That's all you need to do. Granted, yes, I just drew the yes, I just finally drew the poly, and I was gonna, I was gonna I was gonna get to play that into that board and still win anyway. However, he didn't know that. There's, there's no, there's no human, uh, humanly possible he could have known that. Like he, he need, he needed to play in such, in such a way that, that, that he, that he, yeah, that he could get to keep playing the game. Like, I do not think in situations like that, that they should be, they should be like that, like desperate to hold on to even because like, you're, you're not, you're not in a, in a position of power. I am. Like, I'm the one who, who will be deciding what, whether, whether or not you live or you die that next turn. Not you, just me. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Go and leave a like if you did. Go and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.